I remember one time that my Uncle Doc was sitting on the porch with Daddy, and I said, I got to get me a chew that back of the guy. <laughs> and I kept on saying, Uncle Doc, give me a little bit. Give me a little bit. I was seven years old. And he looked over at Daddy, and my Daddy was named Guy. He said, Guy, what boy can wear me that old back? Give, can I give him a piece? He said, yeah, give him some. He wish he'd never seen it. So he gave me a piece, and I done sat and watched him see how he worked it in his jaw. I put it in my jaw just working like hell. He didn't tell me spit. <laughs> I was eating it. And next morning, I was seeing green, double walls and everything. Woo! And I was sick as hell. And we went back down to docks on Sunday, you know. Did that boy make it? Uh, yeah, he said, yeah, he's, he's here with us. I heard he was sick as hell last night, green, gonna turn green. <laughs> he said he's all right today. And he, I walked over to Uncle Doc. Uncle Doc, give me another chew of tobacco. He's <laughs> been chewing ever since. There you go. Hey. I see my granddad chew tobacco too, but <laughs> the way he did it, I had a brother. He's a year and 10 days younger than me. And uh, we would always be over grandma's because they were about, my grandma's house was about, from here to the trailer up there. Okay. Uh, what's that, 150 yards or something? Yeah. Yeah, from us. So we will always spend time going over there, doing little odds and ends at Grandma and Niece, because they were always, you know, old, elderly. You know? So we'd do that, and Grandma was always cooking, so she was the finest cook ever. I don't care what shelf they were, she was the finest cook ever. And it was worth getting a whipping for but take an extra piece of her strawberry cake. Strawberry shortcake, that was awesome. See, when we were growing up in our time, Daddy had a, and, them, and Granddad and them had a hog farm. Okay. When hog killing come, Daddy go get the neighbors down the road. There's colored kid boys and men. They were some of Daddy's best friends. I always helped Daddy. And we got to be the best friends out of our life. And all of us get up on... Daddy and them would scour the hogs and roll them over on the table. Then us boys got to jump on them and scrape them. Get them all scraped down. And then they hang them up. And we got to get out of the way. And they got to gut them and everything. And Daddy would have six colored people helping him. And he always killed the extra hog. And everyone that helped him, he'd give them hog meat to help with the winter. And all them uh, colored fellas got where they liked Daddy. They called him Mr. Guy all the time. And, uh, and every one of them's parents, too, where we was living, mom and all of them got together. And yeah, we have these big fish fries and everything. We have some of the best times of our life. We, see, we was made to call everybody aunt and uncle. It wasn't no such thing. Black boy, color yeah. person, Uncle Elsie, Uncle June, Aunt Elsie, stuff like that. And um, that's what makes me not prejudiced like some people. No, I, I understand get that. I mean... Like for my my dad, he was the biggest thing was oh wait something I wanted to say earlier when you were saying about uh when you was looking up at your aunts and uncles and you wanted to be like that. I remember a teacher told me one day he was like uh well she was like what do you want to be when you grow up and I was like I I don't know she was like just think about it I'm like all right she came back asked again so I basically looked down I'm like I want to be retired yeah I, I'm done I, I just want to be retired I don't want no work I don't want no anything else. <laughs> that's what got what you said. I want to be like the older folks. I'm like, you know, yeah, that's me being retired. Yeah, we said that many times. And, uh, yeah, it is. I tell you one thing with some wisdom that my grandma said. Well, the smartest people that I knew, and they got smarter as I got old, was my grandma and granddad. My grandma was an angel. Grandma's uh, granddad's second and third grade education. But they had the school of life, and they were very, very wise. And uh, that's why Granddaddy did with the tobacco. He, he explained to us, <laughs> after we started chewing, <laughs> he gave a brother and me a chew, and we up at the barn chewing. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, 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 I forgot to tell you. You need to spit that out. <laughs> and so by that time we had started 
Yeah. <laughs> and anybody who's ever chewed that stuff knows exactly what that is. And then later I got watching Uncle Doc spitting it out. And I mm -hmm. said, well, damn, they spit it out. What's he spitting it out for? See, I didn't like and spitting it out. I was swallowing it. it. <laughs> But I thought it was nasty to spit, you know, so. Yeah, like, that's how y'all was most likely raised because that was, yeah, you know, you don't like, spit. Yeah. But uh, we did that, and then the second thing, Granddaddy liked that old turkey. Uh, what they call, I guess what they call it, old turkey, whatever, Wild whiskey. Turkey. Yeah. Wild turkey. Wild mm -hmm. turkey. Yeah, well. Know? And uh, he shared that with us. And he going to, you know, he going to help raise a young man. And so mm -hmm. he, hey, we say, Granddaddy, can we have some of that? All right, and he and he gave it to him. You go swig up, cause we talking about nine, ten years old. We swig up, but when we did that, and I was like on fire, so I'm like, <laughs> you know. And he started laughing, and then Robert, my brother, he turned the bottle up. He wouldn't take put it down. Randy said, "Whoa, boy, whoa!" He grabbed the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> we as Aunt Mom and them I always had a rook game every night on Friday night. We crawl under the table and sip on daddy's liquor right, sitting under the table. <laughs> Mama finally us passed out up under the table and said, them kids under the table dead asleep. She didn't know we were sipping on the jug. <laughs> <laughs> this, that was the thing. And, uh, now, one thing my granddaddy said about like moonshine in here in Franklin County, because at one time, I wasn't too keen on the moonshine business, and uh, because I thought it was something illegal, you know, being a, a veteran and military and following the laws, and and he said, "Boy, you don't know what you're talking about," because his daddy uh, raised, you know, his kids, but what they did was he would make a small batch, and they did what you call a house party. So, Wayman would sell the liquor, Archie would play the guitar, Granddad would play the guitar. And so they go out there, and in a lot of these woods, it was just a path. So you go out there, and you got music, you got liquor, you got a party. And he said, the moonshine kept a dime in your pocket, where there was no money to be made. Mm -hmm. You know, like, okay, I got to thinking about that, so I started asking around. Yeah, he was right. And so, uh, and everybody around right here had their, you had to know how to make it. See, so something Dad, about it, I don't. Daddy run made one, made it for 16 years for the sheriff of Franklin County. Nobody knew it. Yeah. He had to steal underground. Nobody knew he had it, except John Price. Well, see, that's, that's what I mean, like things like this. Yeah, yeah. It was always something, and usually if you were making it here, what I understand is that if you were making like a small batch, because even now you can make a small batch, mm -hmm. and as long as you're not selling it, you're okay. So you make some for your friends or you give some to your friends, uh, something like that, as long as you're not trying to sell it. And most of the moonshine that was made here was the good stuff. When I got in Alabama, yeah. I was stationed down there. First thing that came up with the first civilian that I had to be on the flight simulator with, he said, where are you from? I said, Franklin County. Where is that? I said, it was a little old town about 15 miles south of uh, Roanoke, Virginia. He said, boy, you got any that good moonshine? <laughs> and I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And then one time I was coming, and there's another guy asked me, he said, if you're going home, I want some of that moonshine y'all have. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it did have a good reputation. Yeah, because I know. These I guys got Carl Hall in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now, well, my grandma said that made a lot of sense. And uh, Granddaddy did some stuff, too, but he was a practical jokester. He would give you one of those practical jokes that you don't ever forget. Because he ran me about 100 yards barefoot, summertime, up looking for a left-handed monkey ring. <laughs> yeah, I'm running all over the place. <coughs> Hurry, boy, look at the barn. Look at me. I'm running. He said, Well, come on back. And I came on back and I had this one wrench in my hand because I said, I can find it. He said, Bring it on. 
And so I come on down. He said, run, boy, run. So I'm running, so I'm down there. I can't hardly breathe. And uh, he laughed. I don't know why laughing. And like Daddy, he took us fishing one night. We like fish at night. Yeah. He said, get the gig and the sack. I said, take the damn sack and the gig. And I said, he ain't gonna gig a damn fish. And he said, uh, we're gonna gig the frogs that we see. In. And he like said, we might see a snipe too. And we sat down one night waiting for a damn snipe to come by. You can hear them, but you couldn't see them. And Daddy got away from us. He said, I'm going up the holler and run the snipes down. Y'all be down off a sack wide open. Here we sat now all night. Daddy done gone to house the bed. <laughs> waiting for the snipe to come. In. And there wasn't no such thing as a damn snipe coming. <laughs> Left us out there all night in the dark. Night. No, uh, uh, my uh, godfather, he told me something. I can't technically say what he said it was. Mm -hmm. But um, it was the lower uh, lower end of a person. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, it's sideways. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? And I'm, I'm like, for years. And now, mind you, I'm like 20-something. I'm working at the mechanic shop and everything else. and. <laughs> and it was like the most hilarious shit ever. Now that I'm like, really, God? R really? Really? R I don't even see why I believed them. Because I worked so hard to get to the mechanic shop. I was working at Midas. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I was in between jobs. I had to clean the place for like three months for them to actually finally like, you know what? We're going to hire you on. And I went back faithfully for three months just cleaning, cleaning, cleaning because I wanted to learn. Mm 